As far as many New Orleanians are concerned, there was no better player of a woodwind instrument. Born July 3, 1930, Pierre Dewey LaFontaine Jr., the man better known as Pete Fountain, was one of the greatest ambassadors the city of New Orleans ever had, and one of the most successful clarinetists in music history. Some stars are loud and boisterous, others are quiet and methodical. When it came to Pete Fountain, his clarinet spoke louder than he ever did. It's hard to believe the legend of Pete Fountain almost happened by accident. When he was a child, Fountain was sickly and had weak lungs. A doctor recommended he start playing a musical instrument, anything he had to blow into. Fountain started playing the clarinet around age nine, and over time, his lung health improved. The rest is musical history. After attending Warren Easton High School, Fountain's career quickly blossomed. In 2014, Fountain was honored by the school, and he gave all the credit to his band director, Anthony Valentino. <laughs> oh, Van Valentino was here, mm -hmm. and he's the one that really, really brought me up. So this is, this is he was, he was Van, he was my teacher. Fountain's good friend, Arthur Hardy, who also attended wow. Warren Easton, says Fountain was the soul of New Orleans, a man who never forgot his roots. He, he donated a lot of band uh, instruments to Warren Easton. He was one of our first inductees into our Hall of Fame and uh, again gave back to his roots and, and was big but not too big to come home and be one of us. Fountain went on to appear on The Tonight Show nearly 60 times, perform at the White House four times, entertain Pope John Paul II at the New Orleans Papal Mass in 1987, and perform at halftime of two Super Bowls at the Superdome in 1978 and again in 1990. The Louisiana Music Hall of Famer was a staple on Fat Tuesday for generations. Fountain was the founder of the Half Fast Walking Club. He and other jazz musicians would play throughout the entire route, wearing green tuxedos or red ones or gold ones or something else. Fountain was also a Jazz Fest regular. His first was the first Jazz Fest back in 1970. Pete Fountain recorded more than 100 albums over the years. In 1950, Fountain founded the Basin Street Six in New Orleans. Four years later, he joined the Lawrence Welk Orchestra. Fountain credits Welk with launching his professional career. He later played with the Dukes of Dixieland, then in the 1960s and 70s, owned his own club on Bourbon Street, which quickly attracted major entertainers like Old Blue Eyes. He told some of the funniest stories of, I mean, this guy knew Frank Sinatra, I mean, he knew everybody and had great stories with about all of them, none of which you can tell. <laughs> Pete Fountain's Jazz Club would later take up residence at the Riverside Hilton in downtown New Orleans. That club closed in 2003, and Fountain moved his act to Casino Magic, now Hollywood Casino, in Bay St. Louis. In 2005, Hurricane Katrina destroyed Fountain's home there and much of his memorabilia. Quadruple bypass surgery followed soon after, causing him to miss his first Mardi Gras date with his walking club in nearly half a century. But Fountain was back to help reopen Hollywood Casino in 2006. He stopped performing there in 2010 and retired from performing altogether in April 2014. But there he was again, leading his half-fast walking club the last two years. His final ride, Fat Tuesday 2016. Oh, my favorite day of the year, right here. Through all the highs and lows, Fountain told WDSU's Heath Allen that he has certainly enjoyed the ride. Life is good, Pete. It's it been good for me, really, really. You know, so, but uh, I'm still tooting. <laughs> not, not much, but still tooting. And now, tooting for a much more majestic audience. Just a, a wonderful, wonderful man, and uh, you know, he'll always be a part of our scene. Pete Fountain, a New Orleans music legend whose beautiful music, part of the fabric of the city, will live on for generations to come. Scott Walker, WDSU News.